Women's March next Saturday. And I want to talk with you a little bit about why I'm going to go. Because that decision for me is all about who I am, not as a bishop, but as a Christian. It's rooted in my faith. For me, it's all about the deep and abiding love of Jesus. Jesus loved people. He loved them with concrete action. He healed people who were sick. He gave sight to people who were blind. He fed people who were hungry. He acted. And he loved especially people who were despised or rejected or marginalized. He chose men as his disciples, but because of his choice to love the marginalized, he also chose women. In fact, one of the women that he chose, whom we just heard about in the reading, was Mary Magdalene. When Jesus rose, and when she saw that he was alive, he said to her, go and tell the others that I'm alive. He made her his first apostle, which is a word that means someone who is sent. In the Eastern Orthodox Christian tradition, Mary Magdalene is known as the apostle to the apostles. Jesus' choice of a woman as his first apostle may have come because of his knowledge of scripture. He would have known what we heard in the first reading today. He would have known these words from the first creation story in the book of Genesis. God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. And God said, it's good. St. Paul picked up on that theme in that very short reading that we heard as our second reading today. And he wrote it in, in a letter that is now one of the books of the New Testament. He wrote, there is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ. So we get a biblical vision of the oneness of men and women. A beautiful, strong, powerful vision. But we know from our own experiences of living in the world that we're not living out that vision in this world yet. We're not living out that vision in this nation. Women in the majority of fields still earn less money than men for the same work. Glass ceilings are still firmly in place. Women and girls suffer abuse and sexual assault at dramatically higher rates than do men and boys. And dismissing assault as locker room talk is not acceptable by any standards. Gender inequality remains firmly entrenched. And God's intention revealed to us in scripture, God's intention at creation is still not our reality. Now I have to say here that sometimes when I talk about this and about other issues in churches, people say, you're being biased. They say that my decision to go and march in Washington is biased. And it's true. I do have a bias, a strong bias. But it's not a partisan bias. It's not about one political party or the other. It's a Jesus bias. It's a gospel bias. It's a bias, a choice 
to live out the faith that I proclaim. For me as a Christian, I embrace this bias toward justice and toward equality in Jesus' name. And so I'm going to go to Washington next weekend to stand in solidarity with women of all ages and races and religions who are not allowed to live up to their full potential. I'll go to stand in solidarity with women who have been assaulted and abused and with them say, enough, no more. I'll go to witness to the identity that we have in God, that identity that God proclaimed in creation, that women and men alike are made in the image of God, and it's good. I'll go to Washington, along with thousands, tens of thousands, I hope hundreds of thousands of others, to joyfully walk toward that day when all girls and women, and boys as men, and men as well, will be truly free to be whoever it is that God calls them to be. If you're going next weekend too, maybe I'll see you there. If you're not going, Please hold this march and the other marches around the country and around the world in your thoughts and in your prayers. Either way, let's continue to work together for the justice and the equality between men and women that God intended right from the beginning of God's creation. Thank you, and God bless you all.